Coming up in news tonight. A senior f and is revealing how the party's convention will be funded. That story straight ahead. A 54-year-old woman appears before the magistrate's court to answer the charges of stealing by reason of employment. That and more tonight on our news. Power cuts could pose a serious threat to small businesses. We'll tell you who said it and why coming up on our news. Our news. I'm Dana Smith. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, we now know how the Free National Movement will fund its national convention later this month. FNM officials confirmed today the costs would be split among the two candidates vying for FNM leader and the party's finance committee. Jasmine Brown spoke with Loretta Butler Turner and filed this report. While the pair are competing for the leadership of the FNM, they have come to an agreement on how the convention should be funded. According to Butler Turner, both she and current FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis have pledged to spend $100,000 each on the convention. In fairness to all sides after the funds that should have been um, raised for the party, uh, there was a coming together of all sides. The total cost of the convention is an estimated $350,000. FNM Chairman Sidney Colley confirmed today that Dr. Minnis has already paid his part in full, while Butler Turner has so far paid $50,000. The remaining $150,000 will come from the party's finance committee. The one-time FNM deputy leader says considering this is not how party conventions are normally funded, it does not say much for the state of the party. Well, I think the whole purpose of this convention truly is to try and bring unity. Um, it was very disappointing that the party and its machinery was unable for the first time um, in the party's history to not raise the funds for the convention because normally that is the method of having conventions. Um, so I think that uh, it certainly um, does not show the party and being, a str and being in a strong position. Butler Turner adds that she hopes they can get it together in time for next year's general election. So it's important for a major political organization to have the wherewithal to raise funding and to effectively raise funding to put candidates in the field that would have a viable chance at winning and not everybody that comes forward has the capacity or the ability to raise that type of funding so the party that's the whole purpose of having a party and being able to use that party leadership and that party machinery um, to be able to carry individuals who are not in a financial position to do so. Butler Turner and her running mate, Dr. Dwayne Sands, will go head-to-head -head with Dr. Minnis and current FNM deputy leader Peter Turnquest in the three-day convention that is slated to begin July 27th. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Grand Bahama got to rock with the dock over the weekend as the campaign for free national movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis was officially launched. The event held at FNM headquarters attracted supporters of the current leadership team of Minnis and deputy leader Peter Turnquist, who will be challenged at the party's convention in just 10 days. Addressing the crowd, Turnquist said he and Minnis will retain leadership as a team that will take the party and Grand Bahama forward. Minnis added the FNM's vision of a new Bahamas will ensure that Freeport and Grand Bahama are transformed, empowering Bahamians through opportunity and ownership. Well, Butler Turner is denying that she played a pivotal role in dividing the free national movement. This narrative, this propaganda, this mistruth, lies that are being predicated and um, laid at my feet. I have never, ever been a divisive operator within the free national movement. As a matter of fact, the truth be told, even when I was defeated in 2014, there were stories that I would go out and destroy the party or form my own party or join some other party. Clearly, what I have done demonstrates that that is not the case. 
The opposition party has been in turmoil over the past several months. It all came to a head after it was revealed that six FNM MPs, including Butler Turner, plan on going to the governor general with a vote of no confidence in Dr. Minnis to have him removed as opposition leader. Well, today, Butler Turner said she staved off the would-be coup against the FNM leader. When the offer or the proposal was put to me that the majority of the parliamentary caucus no longer held confidence in our current leader and they came to me, that was definitely an option on the table to go to the governor general. If I were just power hungry and wanting to take the leadership of this party, I would not have given it a second thought. I would have jumped at the opportunity to swipe the leadership away, undemocratically or otherwise, but that was not the premise on which I wish to operate. But Turner also pointed out that she has always been supportive of the party's leader, recalling how she physically stood against police when they attempted to forcibly remove Dr. Minnis from Parliament in 2013 after he had been suspended. But Turner says ultimately she would like to see the FNM become a unified party. In other news, a 54-year-old employee of the Water and Sewage Corporation was brought before the magistrate's court today to face stealing charges. Giorgio Stir reports. After a police bulletin was issued for Brenda Lee Lewis, the accused turned herself into police custody on Sunday evening. Lewis is accused of stealing over $70,000 from the Water and Sewage Corporation by reason of employment. Brenda Lee Lewis, who was represented by Kirshner Higgins, appeared in court number nine before Magistrate Constance Silancy to face five charges of stealing by reason of employment. The first count, it is alleged that on January 21, 2016, Lewis stole $15,429.40. Secondly, it is alleged that on February 1, 2016, Lewis stole $9,199.51. On count number three, it is alleged that on February 1st, Lewis stole $19,250.53. On count number four, it is alleged that on February 4th, 2016, Lewis stole $9,529.41. Count number five alleges that on February 8, 2016, Lewis stole $9,024.64. All funds are believed to be the property of Water and Sewage Corporation located on Thompson Boulevard. Magistrate Delancey gave Lewis the option of having the cases tried in the Supreme Court or the Magistrate's Court. Lewis chose the Magistrate's Court. The case was adjourned to the 7th of September 2016. Lewis was denied bail and was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. Reporting for our news, I'm Giorgio Sturrup.